fabulous. It sounds how he's getting on with that fat controller. Welcome to the show, Jamie. Come on in. How are you? Hello. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. So this is every young boy's dream, isn't it? Uh, one of the voices on Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah, apparently growing up I was a massive fan. Uh, my mum said it was all I wanted to watch growing up. So yeah, it was a huge dream for me to do this. And he's on a new adventure. He's on a completely brand new adventure. It's a new movie, new story. Uh, Looking new for characters. pirate treasure. Apparently. Looking for pirate treasure indeed, exactly. And this is where you come in. You this play... is where I come in. I play Skiff. He's a boat who's... Uh, who's been controlled by, or captained rather, by a horrible man called uh, Captain John, who treats him very poorly, um, and skips a very sweet young boat. And all he wants to be is a real, a real train on a real track. We've yeah. got a little clip. No more searching today, Thomas. Um, uh, we, uh, we forgot our shovels, eh? And I'm too small to be out on the rails in the day when the big engines are rushing about. <laughs> hey, that's it. We'll continue tomorrow night, Thomas. Up anchor, Skiff. We're heading for home. Um, I can't, Sailor John. There's no breeze. The wind has died down. Unless... <laughs> So it's also, very strange to hear Sailor John's not a poser at all, is he? You no, see him holding no, that mask. Hey. Casually just Wind hanging out by his boat. He doesn't care. But you can if you're John Hurt. You can, exactly, of That's course. That's John Hurt's voice. An amazing cast, because mm. you've also got um, Oscar winner Eddie Redmayne. Exactly. Uh, Olivia Coleman as well. Yeah. And then myself, for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put yourself down. Oh, stop it. It's been a, a year of firsts for you, really, because you're also making your West End musical theatre debut. Yeah. Uh, in Bend It Like Beckham. Uh, a wonderful show. Thank you. Um, are you enjoying it? I am, yes. Again, that's something that I've never really done professionally before. When I was growing up, I did a lot of work with the National Youth Music Theatre and National Youth Theatre and local youth theatre stuff. Um, and that's sort of where my heart lay, I think, as, as a sort of young performer. Um, and so when I first started professionally working at sort of the age of 18, I, I kind of left that behind a little bit. Um, so coming back to it at almost 27 now was quite terrifying. It's a different, it's a different game altogether. And how's the football skills now then? They're doing okay. They're all right. They're all right. We have the um, we have the Tottenham ladies team come and play with us most nights. Oh really? Yeah, we have a professional. I'd be, I'd be impressed if it was Arsenal, but unfortunately <laughs> I, 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 I can't yeah, really know. get that excited about, about Tottenham because we, we we saw you sing on on screen. Uh, you were 19, Sweeney yeah. Todd. Yes. What was Johnny Depp like? Amazing. He was incredible. Incredible man. I mean, you know. I actually started, I actually shot it when I was, when I was 18, I think. I'd just turned 18 and I was meant to, I was still living at school because I went to boarding school. So I was getting picked up from school at like five o'clock in the morning, being driven to set at Pinewood and then dropped back. <laughs> and, I, you know, everyone else is there like doing maths or whatever. And I'm going, yeah, just on a boat with Johnny Depp, no big deal, whatever. <laughs> um, and uh, it was the first day of shooting and we're standing on this big boat in the middle of Pinewood Studios and this huge fan blowing our hair and it's the first time I've ever met him, and he's standing next to me, I'm just, this is mental. And he turns to me and he goes, hey, Jamie, that's your biggest fan. And I thought, <laughs> do you know what? That's pretty cool. Do you, yeah, <laughs> bit of a poor joke, but, yeah. uh, but very cool coming from him. And he pushed him in the water. Yes, exactly, yeah. Get yeah. out of my shop. Yeah, exactly, it's my close-up now, Danny. But you've worked with some amazing actors. Um, uh, the Prisoner, for instance, you know, Sir Ian McKellen. And I, I know that he really took you under his wing, didn't he? He did, yeah, that was an amazing job for me. Like I said, you know, not having gone straight from school into work, I wasn't offered the opportunity to really go out and I suppose discover myself, which, uh, which you know, sounds a bit weird, but a lot of people get to do as, as young adults. Um, and so I was thrown into the middle of South Africa and Namibia um, for, for months, for, months, for yeah. about roughly six months. And I think for any young, for any young actor or any young performer or any young boy, that's a very daunting experience. Um, and Ian was there and really did take us all under his wing because you can go slightly stir crazy on set. Yeah. And he was very much the one who would go, right, I think everyone's getting a little bit weird now. Come over for dinner, <laughs> let's all hang out, everything will be fine. How brilliant. <laughs> yeah, he was amazing. Keeping it real. Yeah. Um, how daunted were you when sort of women all around the world fancied you when you, when you <laughs> foolishly did Twilight? <laughs> um, well, it's, it's funny. I mean, with Twilight... You were a good vampire, by the way. Thank you very much. Thank you, yeah. yes. Um, I, with Twilight, it was funny because... I received a lot of attention from that movie, um, and I think unknowingly, 
people paid me attention as sort of sort of a heartthrob. But my character wasn't that at all. I was a very vicious, horrible vampire mm. um, who actually on screen didn't look that fit, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, so it, it, it was, yeah, of course it was daunting. But that was everything that I've done, I think, is has really helped me progress, and, and not only career-wise, but personally as well. But, but also it seems that like you have fingers in so many pies, because I know that you're a model, and yeah. you also do the music, you're working on a new album, yeah. you've got your own clothing range coming out? Yeah, that drops at the end of the year. Um, I'm working on the record. We, we do eight shows a week, so we do Monday to Saturday, two shows on Wednesday, two shows on Saturday, and then go to the studio Sunday morning, and I'm back in London Monday evening for the show. Wow. You're single, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. It's definitely not. God knows how she deals with it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It, it, do you have like a diary? Do you just schedule Pen, in? Pencil her in every now and then when I can. <laughs> yeah, poor Lily. She doesn't deserve that. And also, you're a man of two sides, uh, I should say. Um, uh, two sides to your personality, which we can see in your tattoos. Yes, on my tattoos. Yes, I have. Um, I have a cross and a skull. So I have what's. I have a light side and a dark side. Um, is this your whole body then? Or is it I, just try, I focus mainly on my whole body, yeah. I mean, um, I've got a skull on my leg as well. I've got a heart. Was that all my, before uh, the yeah, vampire? Yeah, I do. Was that before the vampire? Yeah. Yes, they, they started before the vampire and then they sort of continued. Wow. Yeah, I've got a heart there. Above your heart. And on it, actually, it sort of goes there and then really? there's a little butterfly holding oh, it up. That's amazing. If, if you're ever in an accident and a surgeon has to operate... He knows exactly where to go. This, he's going to go, this is <laughs> remarkably <laughs> handy. <laughs> All the best with everything that you've Thank got coming you. up, the musical, the film, everything. Uh, we should have some uh, live music. This is going to be absolutely wonderful with his version of Whitney Houston's I Didn't Know My Own Strength. This is Andrea Fastini. Mm -hmm. 